Are you doing this one thing for your knee pain? Do you get knee pain when you're running, especially when you're doing hills, or are you getting pain when you're doing stairs after your run? It's Monday Night Spark, everyone. I'm Dr. Dwayne Scotty. I'm a physical therapist with Spark Physical Therapy, where we help keep runners active on the pavement, doing what they love without pain, rest, or multiple trips to the doctors. So I'm really pumped about today's live that we're going on today. So you're either listening to this on the Healthy Runner CT Facebook group, or you might be listening to this on our YouTube channel. So if you're coming on here on the Facebook Live, just type in live into the comment box. And if you're watching this on the replay, just type in hashtag team replay. So I know you watch this and I give you a little shout out. So the genesis of this and tonight's topic really came on to me when I was doing my run this weekend. So for those of you that have been following along, the reason why I have not been here of late um, doing the lives, and I missed last week's Monday Night Spark, um, because actually I was celebrating this. So yes, this is the first official Monday Night Spark in the uh, 40 to 49 age category. So next road race, I'll be in a new category. And we were celebrating, I was celebrating with the family, the uh, 40th birthday last week. And it is not so scary to turn 40. Um, if you guys have been there before, just type in been there. And for those of you in the 40 to 49 running category, please tell me that I will be able to place a little bit higher in my age category. And hopefully it's not the other way around. So let me know in the comment box. Um, Dawn's jumping on here on the live. How are we doing, Dawn? Laura's here on the live. Um, thank you for jumping on, guys. And... I really thought about tonight's topic because I thought of all of you when I was on my, so we did a little vacation for the 40th birthday, and then we actually, I was away at conference, so I was presenting at an international dance medicine conference in Montreal, Canada, this past weekend uh, for four days. I was super excited to present my research that I've been doing and working on a dancer screen for dancers, and I went for... I love doing runs um, while away, so I love the destination runs, and I tried to do a couple lives for you guys while I was on some destination runs, one in Florida, and then one in uh, Montreal. We did one in front of Notre Dame there, the Basilica, and so hopefully you guys saw that one. But then I tried to do one at uh, Mount Royale. It was, I was going for a run. I wanted to kind of see the sights, Montreal, explore. I think that's the best way to explore a new city is by going for a run. You're more efficient, and you can get out Um, some more mileage. You could see more of the city. So I stumbled upon this uh, Mount Royale and I saw a bunch of runners like running up this hill and it kept going up, kept going up, kept going up. Apparently I ran the second highest elevation I've ever run um, for the past eight years. I'm imagining the first highest elevation was the Hamden Hills half marathon that I ran. Uh, For those of you that have done Hamden Hills, just type in, you know what I'm talking about, hills into uh, the comment box below. But I was running and I planned to only go out for four. It wound up being an eight mile run um, because it was absolutely beautiful. The colors were just gorgeous. It's, you know, fall time. The colors were really nice. And I was thinking about you because this was definitely more elevation than my body was used to and that I can typically handle. And I was thinking about what are the most common problems? And I was thinking to myself, hey, is my knee going to be hurting after this, especially for the downhill? And then there was actually these like, I don't know, 300 stairs to climb up to kind of the the summit point or the lookout point. And I actually just posted this about an hour and a half ago. So if you want to see some pictures of kind of the stairs and some of the incline, check that out. I posted that within the group so you can check out some of the pictures and the video. I tried to go live, but there was no signal there. So I, I took a little video while I was in the middle of my run because there was actually a road race there. And I thought of all of you and I was thinking about jumping in the race. So tonight's topic, guys. It's going to be knee pain in the front of your knee. So this is a common running-related injury. I've had it before. I've been there before. If you've had knee pain in the front of your kneecap area, maybe you can point to it, but most likely you probably can. It just feels like all in the front of the knee. Let's pull out our anatomy guy. So if you're thinking kind of kneecap pain in the front of your knee, classically, this is going to be pain right in the front around this area. That's, or sometimes people say like underneath the kneecap area. So this is what we call patella femoral pain syndrome. I know it sounds really scary, but it's really not scary. It's a basically overuse irritation 
of the undersurface of your kneecap. So the under part, if I took this kneecap and just flipped it, it would be underneath. So that's why it feels like in the front area of your knee. So that is what we call patellofemoral pain syndrome. And actually, as I was doing this run in Montreal, I was listening to a podcast because as you guys know, I love podcasts and I love learning while I'm out of my podcast. And I was hearing about the new clinical practice guidelines that just came out um, in our journal of orthopedics and sports medicine um, journal. And it was about anterior knee pain. So pain in the front of your kneecap, this patellofemoral pain that I'm telling you about. And this is commonly referred to as runner's knee. So it's very common in runners. And I was listening to the new guidelines because I like to know if the latest stuff, if I'm implementing and staying current with the research and the latest literature. And I actually did my dissertation on this topic when I did my PhD work three years ago. It was on patellofemoral pain syndrome. So I wanted to hear, you know, was there anything new? And one of the authors actually on this clinical practice guidelines, he was on my committee for my dissertation. So I knew these were coming out and this is the first time that they actually publish guidelines for this condition. So I knew it's gonna help a lot of you. So I thought about, hey, you know what? Let me give you the, the lowdown. What are the three myths that we can dispel and that a lot of you have asked me before? And then what is the most important thing you could be doing? So this is the reason why I wanna make sure that I am including this most important thing, when I see a lot of you that we help with knee pain as well as what I need to teach my students, right? So I wanna make sure that they are, um, they are up to date with the latest things. So you guys are coming on here strong. Kerry, thank you for joining. Crystal, good to see you again. So you early this morning, uh, hitting it up in the gym, getting your workout in. Um, it was very nice for me to get back on my routine, my schedule, went out for a nice little three mile run, got the workout in. I am a creature of habit. How many of you are a creature of habit? Just type in habit into the comment box. But I love being away, vacation, conference, had a blast. Very interesting, see new sites. But there is a little part of me that does like that getting back in the routine. So today was definitely one of those days of getting back into the routine. Uh, Debbie's on here on the live. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Um, good to see you. Uh, Laura says, got you by 10 years. <laughs> All right, Laura. So hopefully... Um, the 40s won't be, won't be uh, too bad. Mary, thank you for jumping on here on the live. Candace is here on the live. Sherry's here. Jay Meyerson, my dog, is here. What's up, buddy? Um, Donna's here. Good to see you again, Donna. I just saw you a couple hours ago. Um, and Crystal says that it is habit. So yes, absolutely. Get back in that habit. Get back in that routine. I think a lot of us as runners are uh, we're kind of creatures of habit. So let's get into myth number one, guys. Most common question that I do hear is, all right, I have knee pain. So do I need an x-ray or do I need an MRI? So I don't want to go to a medical practitioner or when you get a diagnosis for your knee pain, you're not really believing the medical practitioner because you feel like you need an x-ray or an MRI to confirm it. And if we don't have an x-ray or an MRI, then we don't know what we're talking about. So that's myth number one is that this clinical practice guidelines talked about that there is no diagnostic test that is going to be able to help you with your knee pain. So the knee pain we talked about before on the front of your kneecap, pain when you run, especially when you run hills or when you're running downhill, and it increases and gets worse when you do stairs or when you do your squats in the gym. It can also hurt you if you sit for a long period of time in your office, let's say you have a sit down job and you're sitting all day, then that can also increase the pain in the front of your knee. This type of pain, patellofemoral pain syndrome, cannot be diagnosed with an x-ray or an MRI. It is best diagnosed with a clinical exam. So these are basically questions a medical practitioner will ask you, such as a lot of the ones I just went over, if you fit that pattern, and then there are specific tests that we would take you through to confirm that diagnosis. And this is what the clinical practice guidelines show, that there is no x-ray, there is no MRI that's going to help define and diagnose your condition. So that's myth number one. By the way, guys, how do you like the shirt? I um, think we did a nice job here on the 40th celebration. Actually, you guys, just got to share this with you in case you missed it. My wife actually posted this within the group. I was like, you got to post this in the group. We were super pumped at Disney, the Not So Scary Halloween Party. We've done this like a bunch of times already with the girls, but... 
I don't know if you guys have seen this recently, but they have an allergy friendly experience now. And we were really excited about this because my wife is gluten free, dairy free. I'm dairy free. My daughter's peanut free and nut free. So it's a little challenge for us. Um, so doing this Halloween party, they actually have allergy friendly experience now where they give you kind of tokens as you go around trick or treating at the different um, rides. And then there are a couple of different sites where you pick up these bags, which have like some really cool products in here that are all nut free, dairy free. Um, and honestly, they are like a lot healthier. So there's some candy stuff, some lollipops, but they have some like fruit and seed stuff. They have some like gummy bears that are, so we were really impressed. And they had some like dark chocolate. So actually some better candy than some of the stuff that they were putting out on the line. So for those of you that are going to the not so scary Halloween party or you've done it before, just type in done it down in the comment box. And we thought that was really cool. And we, it really like made our experience a lot better and a lot more friendly. So one of the other reasons why Disney is just awesome at what they do. Um, so let's get into myth number two. Myth number two is you have pain in the front of your knee. And I just saw this girl in the gym this morning. I see her all the time in the gym and um, she's limping a little bit. And I suspect she probably has some knee pain in the front of her knee and she's always wearing a knee brace. So will a brace help you? Clinical practice guidelines. And guys, these guidelines are based upon like 200 references. So they've kind of scoured the literature, the scientific literature in the last 10 years. And this is, this takes them five years actually to compile all this information and put these guidelines out there. So looking at all the studies that have been done at knee braces, knee brace will not help your knee pain. In fact, actually the intervention that does help out a little bit better than a brace is actually taping, believe it or not. So kinesio taping we know does help with pain relief for this condition. The interesting part about this is that kneecap pain that we talked about before originally has been thought to be more biomechanical in nature, meaning like your kneecap is not tracking properly and it's not sitting in the right place. And it's actually been shown in research that knee braces will actually improve the alignment of your kneecap. But in all the studies that have been done on this topic, it shows that knee braces do not help you at all with your knee pain. So a knee brace will not help you. And all the clients that I've helped um, in the past, all the runners that we've helped, I've never used a knee brace and they've gotten better. We've actually had a couple that run the Marine Corps uh, marathon this weekend. So shout out to you guys that have had knee pain and we've been able to help them without using a brace. And we're gonna get to the one thing. So stick around guys to learn about that one thing that did get them better and that the clinical practice guidelines that we're talking about tonight has, um, has recommended. So if you guys are just jumping on here on the live now, just type in live into the comment box. And those of you who are tuning into the replay, thank you first off for tuning in. Or if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you're on Facebook here, then just type in team replay. So I know you did watch the replay. Uh, Katie, thank you for joining. Congrats to you on your first 26.2. I'm so proud of you. Um, you are like the epitome of hard work and sticking with your plan, your program, your conditioning, and doing a dedicated training plan um, leading up to a race. So you were being very consistent. Um, all right, so Crystal says she'll be taping help with the ankles and heels, um, but will be taping help, will taping help with the ankles and heels? So Crystal has a question about, does taping the ankles and the heels help out? Taping in general, any condition, and I just gave this lecture to my students uh, a couple weeks ago on kinesio taping, the literature out there shows that it helps with pain relief. So for me, I use it on my athletes. So whether you're a runner, you're a dancer, or a gymnast, to help you get through your sport and be able to train if it can provide you a little pain relief. Taping will not fix the problem, but it can help you provide some pain relief. So just like a couple of the clients I've been treating, if you did have a road race that you really needed to run and you were having some pain, then I will tape you and I will help with a little pain relief to get you through that race or to get you through that training run, but it will not fix the long-term problem. So Crystal taping may be beneficial there. So guys, if you have a question like Crystal, feel free. Like you guys have my time and attention right now. Feel free to shoot a question into the comment box. I'll be happy to answer it. 
Um, Emmett, thank you for joining here on the live. Good to see you. Um, placebo effect only, uh, Laura says. So I'm assuming that we're talking about taping. And I think that is the uh, reasoning and the rationale. A lot of the kinesio taping literature has shown that just placing a tape on the skin is no better than actually applying it in the specific fashion that the courses recommend. So I agree with that. Um, so Katie's here on the live. You're welcome, Katie. Um, so Debbie says, I need to watch it again. So she's probably going to catch that on the replay. So it sounds good. I'm going to see you see you on the replay. And Crystal says, thank you. So you're welcome. All right. So bracing. Bracing will not help your knee pain. Okay. Third myth is, who do I need to go to? Should I see, or the third myth I, I commonly experience is, I need to go to an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knees for my condition. And if it's the condition that we talked about, meaning you didn't have a specific injury, you didn't fall down a flight of stairs, you didn't, you weren't playing football or basketball and you pivoted and twisted on your knee and you heard a pop and it could possibly your ACL that you blew out and you didn't have this rapid knee swelling in your knee. If that wasn't the case and your knee has been hurting and it's been getting worse, with running, with squats, with stairs, and you have this knee pain that we're talking about tonight, then there is no surgery for you. Therefore, you do not go, you do not need to see an orthopedic surgeon to diagnose and help your knee pain because there's no surgery. So an orthopedic surgeon is just going to tell you that you have patellofemoral pain syndrome. Go see a physical therapist. So if you want to save yourself a copay, a visit, time and not wait for the appointment to go see an orthopedic specialist, then go see your local physical therapist who specializes in working with runners who will be able to easily diagnose this condition and be able to start getting you going on the one thing you need to do to treat this knee pain. So we've been kind of amping it up this whole live. What is that one thing? The one thing, the clinical practice guidelines, so this is coming out of here, orthopedic physical therapy practice, clinical practice guidelines is exercise. Exercise is the one thing you need to do to help your knee pain. That is what all of the studies have shown and that is very consistent with what I've been teaching the past decade as well as implementing with many of you active runners is strengthening exercises specifically. So not specific stretches, but specific strengthening exercises. So when we're talking about exercises, it's really a matter of, with this condition, finding, finding the cause of why you're getting the knee pain. For this condition, there's really two things that can be causing your knee pain. It's either the, the things happening down below at your foot and ankle. So if your foot and ankle is what we call overpronating and rolling and flattening a lot, especially if you have flatter arches. And when you're running, you're overpronating a lot. When you roll in, the knee goes in. So when that knee goes in, that can cause irritation on the undersurface of your kneecap. So that's one issue that can be happening. But more commonly, honestly, it's happening from up here, up above. And these are your hip muscles that are not attached to this skeleton here, where you can actually see a little bit of them right here. This is your gluteus medius muscle, the bottom of it, and your glutes back here. Um, as well as your quad muscles in the front. These are the most important muscles that you need to strengthen, and that's what's been shown in the literature, and that's a consensus statement. So if I had to like break down 200 scientific research articles for you, and the standard now within our orthopedic sports medicine profession to treat your knee pain, if you have the knee pain we described today, is strengthen your muscles your hip muscles, as well as your quad muscles, okay? That's the overlying theme there. And actually, this is a nice, this is a nice kind of segue, honestly, to what we're going to be talking about in next week's live. So I'm really excited and pumped about this, guys. Next week, we're going to have a guest here. We're going to have Dawn Tebitz, who is a fitness professional. Um, she's got many years of, of fitness experience working in different realms, and we're actually going to talk about next week's topic is going to be like a big pain point that I hear a lot of runners struggle with. And it's going to be talking about like, how best do you reduce 
that belly fat. So kind of that pouch or, or that muffin top or in us guys, these love handles that we have, we're going to talk about that. And I have a feeling one of those tips that Dawn's going to be kind of delving into and recommending, she's going to go over three tips, how to reduce that belly fat. And we're going to have her here live for a little in, info session, a little Q&A, is going to relate to somehow strengthening. So that's just a little teaser for next week. I hope I see you all next week at 8 p.m. for a Monday Night Spark. And we're going to get into that topic. But going back to tonight's topic is knee pain, that strengthening is the one thing that you need to do. All right. So if you guys have any questions here on knee pain, drop it into the comment box before I kind of sign off for tonight because I want to be able to help you in um, as much best fashion. A, a bunch of you guys are new to the group. We got a lot of people new within these last three weeks, and I thank you for joining. So you might not have checked these out before, but on our Monday Night Sparks, I'm here for you. Ask your questions. Type them into the comment box. Even if you're watching on the replay, I will actually answer your question. And I, I love to hear back from you and, and hear your feedback. So if there's a topic of interest that you guys want to hear about, type it into the comment box. And if I'm not the expert on that, if it's not injury related, if it's not exercise related, then I will find one of my colleagues, one of other, my other professionals that I work with to come on and actually share their experience to answer some of the questions that you have. Um, so Laura says that it's absolutely the truth. And uh, she was talking about knee bracing before. So bracing definitely, and I think it definitely has a psychological effect as far as that placebo effect, you feel more stable. However, the negative consequence, which I didn't mention about bracing before, is that it tends to actually shut down your muscles. So it's kind of counterproductive to the one thing that you should be doing, which is strengthening your muscles. So that's the take on the knee bracing. Latoria, thanks for jumping on here. Good to see you. Uh, Stephanie's here on the live. So Candace says her knee bothers her when she's running on turf, but fine on other surfaces such as the road, dirt, or treadmill. So that is common, Candace. So don't feel like you're the only one. Um, definitely turf is tough on the joints in general. So they talk about that a lot in sports if you follow a lot of baseball. I know a lot of baseball-related injuries result into playing on turf, like teams that play home games on turf a lot have more injury rates. And I know it's been a big topic in football as well on turf. So difference in surfaces can definitely have an effect. If you really wanted to run on turf, then it would be a matter of training yourself in a more of a progressive fashion to tolerate the different forces because you're using different muscles when you're on turf. Turf is a lot softer surface. So you have to actually accommodate to that softer surface, especially if you're over pronator, like we talked about before in your foot and ankle, then your muscle demand is going to be higher. So your muscles need to be stronger to prevent some of that knee going in business. So that's probably the reason why you're having more pain on turf is because the surface is a lot softer and it requires more muscle demand. So you have to strengthen your muscles even more so and do specific exercises um, to be able to run on turf or just really kind of back it off a little bit and gradually increase that training as you go. All right, so I hope that answered your question. Uh, Don says the muffin top, muffin top, yes. Uh, you know, that is a common pain point and we uh, struggle with that, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. So hopefully next week's uh, live is gonna be able to help uh, many of you out with that. So right now, guys, I wanna know what is um, the one thing that you learned from tonight? So was it more about the bracing? Did you not know about that bracing really doesn't help with knee pain? Or was it that there really is no, there is really no diagnostic test to pick up knee pain, that an x-ray or an MRI really won't help a medical professional diagnose your knee pain? Which one of those is it? Is it the brace or is it the x-ray or MRI? Just type it into the comment box. So I know what was kind of new for you. And if you are a runner that is struggling with the knee pain we talked about today in the front of your knee, and you're feeling it on mile six, mile eight, mile 10, you're feeling it when you go down hills, you're not able to kind of increase that cadence and turn over time. You're feeling it when you go up and down the stairs at the office or within your house, when you're going down the stairs first thing in the morning to go downstairs, make that cup of joe, and you're feeling that pain, at Spark Physical Therapy, we work specifically with runners at finding 
those causative factors that we mentioned before. So what we do is we go through a full running analysis. We watch you run. I take video of you running. We break down your running form, seeing if there are any contributing factors, and then go through a full movement analysis, look at your squat, look at you in single leg, see how your muscles are functioning, because when you run, you're standing on one leg. And then strength test all your muscles. So find out which ones are weak, which ones, where are the muscle imbalances, which ones may be tight, and then design a specific customized program for you and provide you with all the videos of the exercises that you need to do to help strengthen, just like the clinical practice guidelines recommends, is strengthening exercises to combat your knee pain so you can have a customized, individualized program with specific guidance to help guide you back to running so you can continue to hit that pavement without pain, rest, or going multiple times to the medical provider's office. So typically I will see my clients once a week, sometimes once every two weeks, and then we provide you the tools and kind of wean you down so you're gradually increasing your running, providing you guidance in terms of your training, how much mileage you should be doing, what types of runs you should be doing during the week, and then progressing your strengthening plan as you go. If you would like more information about that, I highly suggest you check out our website. It is sparkyourtraining.com. And check out our running injury clinic. You'll find out more information there as well as getting a free phone consultation with me to see if it's a right fit for us to work together and see if we can provide some solutions to your knee pain. So I just want to say before I hop off here, thank you all for jumping on here on the live. Marva's here now on the live. How you doing, Marva? Thank you for jumping on. And Ann is here. Ann, thank you so much for sharing uh, the post before. I greatly appreciate it. Um, thanks for jumping on now. We kind of talked about the three myths of knee pain today. So in recap, guys, in summary, we talked about three myths of knee pain that runners have. And the first myth was that there is no diagnostic test. There's no x-ray MRI that is going to help you diagnose your knee pain. The second myth was knee bracing does not work. Knee bracing will not help your knee pain. Third myth is surgery. There is no surgery to actually treat patellofemoral pain syndrome. So pain in the front of your kneecap. So there is no need for you to go see an orthopedic surgeon for your knee pain. Go see your local physical therapist who specializes in working with runners. They can easily diagnose this condition as well as start implementing treatment right away to help get you better so you can get back to running and doing the things that you love. If you guys have found any of this information value, I just really appreciate it. If you hit the like, hit the love button. The reason why I ask for that is it will help Facebook realize that this is valuable information and it will put it in front of other runners like yourself on their newsfeed so they can actually see this post and maybe it can help them. So if you found any of this information value, please hit that like, hit the love button. I would greatly appreciate it and it would also help others just like you uh, Marvin, that's okay. Check out the replay. Once we're done here, you'll be able to check out the full replay. Thank you for jumping on here. Thank you all. You were either listening within the Healthy Runner CT Facebook group, or maybe you were listening on the Spark Your Training YouTube channel. I thank you greatly for watching this, and I hope to see you next week for our live 8 p.m. Healthy Runner CT group. We're going to get into how to get rid of that belly fat. All right, so what are the three tips that you need to do to get rid of that belly fat? And we're going to really be delving into that. So thanks again for jumping on here. Until next time, guys, have a good night. Bye.